All right, today we're going to review the HDLRC Zeus 35. It's an all-in-one 20 by 20 flight controller, has 35 amp ESCs, some black box flash on there, F4 board. So on paper, this thing's looking pretty good, but let's check it out. Let's take a deeper dive. All right, so come in the box, we get some stickers, you get the flight control board, we got some XT60 connectors, uh, you got an XT30 here as well, you get a cap that is a for a, uh, it's a 220 microfarad, 35 volts, so prepared for 6S. Grommets, there's also a 1000 microfarad, 35 volt, again, prepared for 6S, cap as well. So you got two different caps, one, uh, two different sizes here. Get some 14 gauge wire. You can see this is all soldered up already on the XT30. And you can solder it yourself, the XT60 with the 14 gauge. And then of course the flight control board itself, QAQC passed it says. What I really like about this board is it has, it's really everything on it. It has two UARTs, so it's not a ton of UARTs, but it's what you need. And it has black box flash on it with 35 amp ESCs. There are BL Heli S, but not really a problem anymore with JESC or Jazz Maverick and RPM filtering and things of that nature. Get some nice paper instructions. And it has all the board and pin layouts here, so you can see that. So I'm not going to go through each one of those individually, but you have all your connectors here that you need uh, for buzzer and the UARTs, UART 1 and UART 2. To connect smart audio, you have a 3.3 volt pad for if you have spectrum, 5 volt pads, buzzer, LED. This does have a built-in OSD, so you can bring your camera in and out to the VTX signal there. It has different layouts for connecting up your gear. And then it talks about you know how to connect, set up your UARTs here as well. There's some of the specs on it, so you can see we're running an MPU 6000 gyro, so tried and true there. We have 16 megs of onboard flash. Again, 35 amp ESCs, 40 amp peak for 10 second burst uh, max, and it's an F411 flight controller. You can see the target right here for beta flight. So I'm looking at here, there's a 20 by 20 bolt hole pattern, and these little grommets take it down to M2 screws. So when you, you put those grommets in there, then you'd use an M2 bolt to mount it. But the overall board dimensions are listed right here. It's 40 by 30, so it's obviously a little bit bigger there. So here's the rig that I mounted it in. This is a 20 by 20 stack in here. So you can see it's perfect for a, a rig like this where there's just two things in the stack. We have the all-in-one flight controller, ESCs, and everything there. And then I have a VTX on top uh, on my 20 by 20 screws. Uh, obviously the ESC wires and everything's wired up internal and you can just see it's a two board stack in there. On here I got the Zing motors. I got some props that work really well. These are the DTS props from Zonda Hobbies that I did a previous review on one of their rigs and noticed how good these props are, so I've used those. And I also did some flights on this with the HQ 5043s as well, the clear, so we have some logs on that. Obviously mounting up and wiring is simple with this because it's all in one, you just take your connectors to the back here. I did two different flight variations on this, one with the provided 1000 microfarad cap wired up to the leads, and then I also switched this out to put on a 2200 microfarad cap as well and see how that uh, worked with it. So let's go check out the logs and see how she flew and see what the noise profile looked like and see how this, this all worked out. Okay, so with the board mounted up in this rig, I did a number of flights, and you can see over here I collected some DVR, since we only have, we don't have HD on this, and then also some black box logs. And let's see what we got. So before doing the flights, I made sure to set the debug mode to gyro underscore scaled, so I got the raw vibrations from it prior to any filtering. If I go to UAV tech trace template setup number zero on the keyboard here, you can see I have roll, pitch, and yaw. This has this, the green line is the set point, that's basically where the sticks are. And I have the raw gyro and then the filtered gyro. And then I just have the throttle overlaid on this one. And then you can see here's pitch and then here's y'all. So if I go down through and take a look at this, and here's just kind of cruising around the house. And then I do a punch out here. And right here is, you know, when you're looking at this kind of stuff, and this is what I would recommend 
everybody should use black box, especially if you're having an issue, just to see kind of underneath the hood. And you can see on here that my roll axis is a, uh, has vibrations, but they're nice and tight and symmetric. But my pitch access, that, you know, when you really look down here at this D term, you can see the D term is going nuts on pitch, but not on roll. So roll is nice and tight. That's the red line in here. If I proof down the scale, you can see this is roll D term, pitch D term. And you can see the pitch D term is really hyperactive. And that's coming from the vibrations on the pitch axis. So if I click this little button here and uh, expand that and I can zoom in a little bit, you can see the vibrations here are really asymmetric and the filtering since the peaks, you know, the distance between the peaks here are pretty far spread out. That means it's low in the frequency domain so that the filtering is not really doing a lot for that. So we can run a spectrograph on the roll access raw noise by clicking on the graph title here and then I can hit this expand button here and you can see this is the raw vibrations and down here in our control frequencies, anything below, you know, 100 hertz. So this is 70 to 170. So this is line 70. This line over here is 170. That we don't really have any vibrations, any of the vibes it's picking up, these small oscillations here going up and down. If you're looking behind the gray area on the screen here, this is all this high frequency stuff. And this is the motors. And that's how that looks. And then if I click on the filtered trace for roll, that's all filtered out. And you can see the filters crush that all out. Now in here, I don't have the RPM filtering on. This is just the dynamic notch and all this filter setup here is really just the defaults. Now let's take a look at the pitch axis. So on the pitch axis, when I click the spectrograph on that, you can see I have this real dispersed noise throughout down here. And that vibration, it's a vibration slash motion uh, issue. And I have the same thing on yaw. So looking at this log, it looks like the pitch axis and yaw gets all kinds of weird vibrations and noise on it. And it generally looks to be anywhere above 40% uh, throttle, 50% throttle. And it's very hard for me at least to distinguish between what's vibration and what is electrical noise. My hunch is it's electrical noise, but it's a tough one, especially since you know, I put all the capacitance on here we talked about. So there's a lot of filtering on there at this point. So a couple things I want to look for is just browse down through here. And what I try to look for is, you know, like cross access influence. So if I come to here, I can start to see it here. Now here I'm doing 0% throttle, right? Because I'm doing a just a hard roll. And Right here, you can see the pitch access spikes at two different spots. So what I get interested in now is going into the graph setup, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Add Field, and I'm going to pull up Amp Draw on this, uh, which is right here. And I can go ahead and hit Save Changes. And you can see as I'm doing that hard roll, when it goes to arrest the move, or kick it into the move, more appropriate here, and then arrest the move here. Whenever the amp usage spikes, you can see the noise on the gyro here spikes as well. So that's an indicator to me that there's something electrically happening there. There's not just all sudden, you know, these vibrations on pitch access when it's spinning up a couple motors to arrest the move. It's not a smoking gun, they're theoretically possible but it's it's a sign to me so we're gonna keep moving down through and looking at that you can see the same thing whenever the amps go up this is when this vibration starts to occur here the next thing i want to look at is doing some sharp uh, pitch moves as well and see what we have so here you can see some sharp pitch moves and i want to zoom in to some of that and you can see right here see these spikes where it just shoots down and way back up Coincidentally, at the same time the amp is spiking up, the amp draw spiking up, you get in, whenever you have a gyro signal, this is the raw gyro signal that goes down, essentially you're going from 200 degrees per second, 238, down to 60, and then back to 238 within millisecond, you know, milliseconds of time. You know, the difference between here, so we can move this over, 
hold down Alt and you can move one sample at a time. If I hit M for mark point and go down to here, that's happening within two milliseconds. Then it's reversing course and going back up within eh, about two milliseconds, 500 hertz or two milliseconds right here. You get into situations where you see those sharp spikes and that's just not physically possible for it to be slowing down and speeding up within two milliseconds um, to that degree of movement. And that is more of a sign of either a gyro issue or an electrical issue. Now, I don't know which it is, I mean, but to me that's signs that, you know, we need to flip this board out to something different and see if that goes away, it should. Uh, really seems to me, you know, the breadcrumbs are pointing to some sort of uh, electrical uh, or gyro issue on that on the board. Some other moves here where if I look at the D term, see how the D term is just really going crazy down here on the pitch axis and the roll looks fairly good. It's just really the pitch axis that uh, you, you start to see the overshooting. So this I could notice in flight when I was doing a, a fast forward uh, flip you could feel like the quad was going faster than my rates were predicting it to go or, or asking it to go. And you can see that here, if I look at the pitch axis alone here, this was going all the way up to 1600 degrees per second. You know, it was getting over ramped and then trying to bring that back down, overshooting. So it was out of control basically. Uh, brought it back into control, but this segment right through here, was it was getting out of control. So I noticed this on the Maiden, and I just have 4S on this. I'm not running 6S. So I did a couple different things. I tried different props. I tried uh, 48 kilohertz PWM. I tried putting on a larger cap. So it comes with a 1000 microfarad cap. I put on a 2200 microfarad cap on the lead. And finally, I tried putting the 220 microfarad cap that it comes with on the five volt pads right here and what's going on there is you have your VBAT power is getting scaled down to the five volts and then that gets scaled down to the 3.3 volts from the five volt rail to power the gyro and so putting a cap on that if there's any electrical noise on the five um, volt rail that should help with that for the VTX and, and anything else uh, it did not make any it, it better. I mean, this is that flight with the two caps on it. The other thing I did on there was to push up the VTX, and you can see I have the VTX mounted in here, but there's this big gap. I can almost stick my finger all the way in. So there's really nothing near the board uh, for any EMF or electrical magnetic. You know, that's probably a centimeter and a half away from the board. So I would think that's enough gap, but I'm not an EMF expert. I don't have any copper uh, on there or anything of that nature, but um, that's my best shot there. This board is uh, screwed down uh, pretty tight in here. You can see I can push it on either side, and it's not really making any bends uh, other than the quad moving when I push down. So my best assessment on this is there's a little bit of an electrical thing or the gyro. I mean, it is a MPU 6000 gyro, so that's a pretty tried and true, but it looks to me like the pitch and yaw access are not that great. Now, the caveat with this is this is a new build. This is a build that other people have used as well that produces or flies really good uh, mechanically with vibration and things of that nature. So. Others are having a lot of success with this, but in this, I'm going to, I, I kind of am thinking it's the flight controller on this. With that, I need to just take it out and I'm gonna swap all the parts out to put in the Flight One ESC and then a millivolt flight control board on here and see if I have the same issue. I didn't have time to do that for this review since I've been trying all these other things to try to make this to work. And at this point, I don't know what else to try. So what's my final on the HDLRC Zeus 35? I really like the features of the board. I really like they incorporated everything that you would need for the basics. You know, 35 amp ESC, 16 megas of onboard flash, OSD support, 20 by 20, nice compact. It all fits well. The only thing that I'm struggling to make a positive recommendation on this board is that some of the issues I just outlined. Um, they're not welcome issues. I wish it wasn't there, but they are. Uh, I have no choice but other to present them to you. So I tried a different number of different things as you saw there. Uh, 
with adding capacitance and it still didn't solve the issue. I'm going to do a follow-up video on this where I'm going to switch this board out to something different and see how that produces. Uh, stay tuned for that. I would love to hear from you. If you have an HDLRC, if you have this flight controller and it has mounted up, did some logging, how is that shown? If that's shown well, please put those comments down below. I would really love to see that. We'll pin that post on that comment. The more feedback, the better on it. Thanks everybody and I hope this helped.